Today's video is brought to you by Spoon Staff Stories. A new episode just came out recently and you should totally check it out. They are Mrs. Six animated babies and narrated stroke voiced by yours truly. Link in the description. Did you know? Yeah, apparently atheism is over. I didn't get that particular memo. Damn. No one ever tells me nothing. But sure, okay, I mean... I still don't believe Mr. God does and exist, but what exactly has changed without me noticing? Hopefully, it's a candid picture of God on the toilet trying and failing to cover his face. That's literally the only way to prove God exists. To me. Oh, it's going to be proof. Awesome. And it's by Dr. Haytham Talar. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right, and I don't care. I tried my best, damn it. But as we all know, having any old doctorate makes you an expert in every single facet of human knowledge that has ever and will ever be. And this whole thing is apparently from his book, Renounce Your Atheism, which is totally not a hilariously stupid title that proves that he has no idea what atheism is or how atheists tend to think. So this definitely isn't going to be some random set of deeply flawed, very, very silly arguments that do not contain a single shred of proof. And is in fact a pamphlet with the previously mentioned photo with the word SEE in all caps underneath it. What is atheism? Wait, you don't know? Then why did you make this whole thing? Awful. And sorry to keep all of these so brief, but really, there's so much silly so fast that it needs to be addressed right away. Otherwise, this crap's going to get really confusing really fast. Atheism is rejecting belief in any form of unseen divinity. Uh, see, I would almost give you that, except for the rejecting belief bit. Because no, no one's rejecting belief. That's not what's at issue. The rejection is of claims. Rejecting belief makes the fact of one's non-belief in God, God's ETC sound like an active choice when, well, that's not how anything works. You don't choose what you do or don't believe. You just do or don't believe. The atheist denies the existence of a creator, of divine revelation, and of resurrection. Again, no. The atheist rejects the claims of those things. Your premise presupposes that those things do definitely exist and that we know they exist and are, for reasons that I can never quite fully fathom why you would think anyone would think this, but rejecting those factual claims and are just being uh, completely insane considering most religions' repercussions for actively rejecting those quote-unquote truths. What is the proof that there is a creator? There are many proofs, but we will focus on two. Wow, they must be really, really, really good proofs then. And I hope the fact that you are just focusing on two isn't a get out of jail free card for when someone inevitably points out how piss poor they are for you to go, well, there are other better proofs. I just didn't use them and then you sneak out of the back before anyone gets a chance to ask you exactly what they are. The first is called Proof on the Basis of Existence. Ugh. Well, that's going to be good, isn't it? It's not like we've heard this kind of argument time and time and time again, and you lot, for reasons completely unknown, don't seem to get why it's a completely ineffective argument. And anyway, an argument, no matter how compelling isn't actually proof. You need, well, proof for that. And the second is called proof on the basis of providence. Oh, that's going to be even worse. I mean, providence, assuming you mean like the main definition, out and out requires God to already exist for it to have any value. Which, when you're talking to an atheist, isn't going to be something that will have any sway over them whatsoever. See, it's classic with you apologists. Having the inability to understand that the person you are arguing against doesn't hold the same beliefs you do. At all. That's why saying things like, you just hate God, or you are actually a Satanist, 
and countless other patently ridiculous sentiments have zero impact on anyone but the most stupid of atheists and non-believers of your claims. And convincing someone that stupid of anything isn't exactly what I would call an achievement. What is meant by proof on the basis of existence? Everything is temporarily originated. It came into existence after it was non-existent, so it must have had an originator. Nope, nope, nope. That's not how that works. You can't just say something must have had an originator and then it magically becomes true. The thing is, the idea of a being beyond time and space, as it would have to be, is potentially just as likely as everything coming from nothing or a bunch of other stuff, simply based on the fact that we don't know yet. And say existence definitely did come from something... That something doesn't have to be sentient or even make any amount of sense. Like, it could just be a cube. Just a big cube made out of jam that, for reasons we have yet to work out, occasionally farts out a universe. Is that likely? No. But until we have evidence for anything, it's pretty much just as likely as anything else. This means we have 10 to the 124th proofs that a creator exists. What? Seriously though, what? Where does that even come from? That's quite the number to be pulling out of your ass. Also, I gotta say, this is a really, really nice video. I mean, the content is dreck, but it's always a treat when someone actually bothers to make a video that doesn't make me want to vomit so hard that it comes out of every possible gap in my skull. And yes, you are welcome for that delightful mental image. This number constitutes the overall number of molecules with their functional activities throughout the universe. Uh, 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 you know, it seems I've run out of ergs. I am just erged out. But that's a nope at 10 to the 124th power because you don't have one solid proof of those things having originated in the way that you claim. Has anyone taught you basic maths? Zero evidence times 10 times 20 or times 10 to the 124th or whatever. All of them equal zero. You have exactly zero proofs based on your criteria. Christ, I take it back. The niceness of the presentation is overwhelmed by the smug self-assured stupidity of the arguments. By the way, this number is huge. It means 10 followed by 124 zeros. Ah, so the size of my penis. Do you know what? I need to stop lying about it. Mine just isn't that small. I'm sorry, I know, I have disappointed you all. I'll go flagellate myself right now with my cock, because it's so big. ETC. So, everything that originated and entered the sphere of existence is a proof that there is a creator. Except that it isn't, because you have not even proven the very first premise you need for any of this to make a lick of sense, being that a creator created anything. So no, that's not proof of anything other than you apparently don't know how words work. That is why many verses of the Quran bring the creations into focus. Oh fun, it's actually Islamic apologetics. Don't see that as much around this way. At least, not in a way that isn't just straight up in English, so I don't have to get it translated and, God forbid, read out that translation. That's what we around these parts call efforts. And clearly, no one in this interaction is putting any of that in, so why the hell should I? Allah says, say, look at whatever exists in heaven and on earth. But signs and warnings do not benefit the unbelievers. So if you already believe in me, then things I say are proof of me will totally continue to convince you. But if you don't, then it's going to take a lot more than lazily pointing at random objects and saying, I did that, lol. Yeah, no shit. Smart observation, mate. Doesn't actually mean anything other than people who don't question things don't question things and people who do, well, do. <laughs> Do -do. Translation of the Meaning of the Quran, Chapter 10, Verse 101 Allah also says what means, Do they not ponder about their own selves? Allah has created the heavens and the earth, and all that is between them for a purpose and for an appointed time. 
yet many deny they will never meet with their Lord. That was 99% gibberish. I get that it's translated and things get lost in translation, ETC, but I bet the original version, I bet it all sounds like a Deepak Chopra quote. You know what I mean, right? People talk a lot about how poetic and rich the book is. Yeah, well, Chopra says all sorts of flowery crap too, but that doesn't mean it means anything. In fact, do you know what isn't written in verse? Science books. You know why? Because they actually want the things that are said to make sense to everyone and not be super open to interpretation. There's a reason that science isn't divided into sects. Chapter 30, verse 8. He also says what means. Have they not looked into the realms of the heavens and the earth and all that Allah created and seen that the end of their time might be near? What will they believe in if they do not believe in this? Something else? I just, this is all the same as the rest of them. My book is right, because look, it says it's right. Well, yeah, of course it does. If I wrote a big book of nonsense that I wanted people to believe, I would bang on and on and on and on about how correct I was all the time too. Chapter 7, verse 185. So everything that has originated is in itself a direct proof that there is an originator. Define originated, because we know how 99.99% of things in the universe formed without anything even resembling an originator. Personally, I think it's much less of a stretch to say that the 0.01% of whatever probably also had a natural explanation without the need for a god than it is to say a giant sky man for whom we have not a jot of evidence or even a picture of them on the toilet actually made that tiny last bit happen for no reason. Also, the fact that we know how most of this stuff originated without a god already refutes your statement anyway. Almost like the gazillion years ago that this was written and whoever wrote it didn't know what they were talking about, so at least you have that in common with them. What is meant by proof on the basis of providence? Well, if the last segment is anything to go by, basically nothing. And considering the meaning of providence, the protective care of God or of nature as a spiritual power, means it's likely a thousand times nothing, which is like way more nothing. Oh wait, no, it's still just nothing, but to be fair, it's still just nothing. It means that everything ultimately in existence started from the quarks, which are the smallest subatomic particles ever allocated up to the galaxies, carries an extent of functional complexity. All right, calm down, spirit science. Seriously, you can't just find out scientific terms and vague non-specific definitions, crap them out and say, therefore God, or spiritual mumbo jumbo in spirit science case, or whatever. That doesn't mean anything, and it's not going to convince an even vaguely scientifically literate person of whatever it is you are trying to sell. This means that each has a specific and specialized function, and a functional complexity necessarily means a great above mere existence. So, things are special. God tier special. Because they don't just exist, they also do things. Even though they do those things regardless of which God or not you believe does or does not exist. Like, even if you were right, which you're not, but even if you were right about that bit, what makes you think it's your God? And before you start, I know why you think it's yours, because it's what your parents and friends and family believe, and that's it. And yes, it's possible that what I just said is not true, but it's really, really, really likely. Almost as if the culture you are immersed in can have an effect on the things that you believe to be true or something. Existence is a status, and the complexity within the originated thing is a grade above that status of mere existence. So. Everything around you is designed in a special method, so as to carry on a special function. Ugh. Oh, hey, that's back. Anyway, ugh. Things appear to have a design with special functions. That is, it do things, therefore God. Now, 
If it turns out that things, oh, I don't know, maybe there are things in creatures, say ones we are quite familiar with, that are not necessary and thus do not serve a special purpose, almost as if they evolved and as they evolved, these specialised parts lost their use and are now vestigial. But no, that can't be right. Otherwise, we would have come up with a word for that, which we clearly have not come up with a word that means vestigial. Thus, all things have a purpose. Thus, your premise isn't instantly and totally flawed. Wait a minute. Hence, everything around you carries a functional complexity. Apart from the things that don't. Coughing noise. And this complexity is a proof of origination, which means that it must have had an originator. Things are the way I say they are, even though they often demonstrably aren't, therefore God. I gotta say, man, I'm not exactly what the kids these days refer to as convinced, bruv. In fact, if I were a filthy, godless atheist, I would think this entire thing was hilariously silly. Oh wait, I am. Laughing sounds. No, I don't know how to make human noises anymore. I forgot. An example of this is the lamp. This is a functional complexity. The electric lamp is made up of a coil, a lead wire that connects electricity to the coil. Ah! Watchmaker argument! Kill it with fire! Yeah, this has been debunked so much, we actually have a name for it. So, you know, can you just not? Inert gas that protects the coil and does not affect it or the electricity. A glass bulb that prevents the entry of air or the exit of the inert gas, which would otherwise burn the coil. And finally, the base of the lamp, which connects the lamp with the socket and ensures the passage of the electrical current. Therefore, God, great. Can we move on, please? Please? Here, the electric lamp demonstrates a system of complexity that cannot be dismissed or simplified, since it carries a rudimentary, rational indication to the mastery of the manufacturer. Then, the one who denies the masterful formation of the lamp, or assumes that it originated by chance, is the one required to fetch a proof to his assumption. We know who did and how light bulbs are made. We know who did and how all man-made things are made. We also know that natural things do not need makers. So if the universe is part of that natural world, then one can safely presume that there is a good chance that it happened in the same fashion. That or it's timeless, or lots of things. But you can't, and I am getting super tired of having to say this, you can't just say God did it and have that be true without a smidgen of supporting proof, which you don't have because your two little proofs here are absolutely awful. The lamp maker knows pretty much well what electricity means, how it is conveyed, the benefit of the lamp, and the sensitivity of the coil. That's why the presence of the lamp is in itself a proof on the mastery of the maker. While having a diverse array of lamps can never be a proof that it is all just mere chance. I love lamp. Do you really love the lamp or are you just saying it because you saw it? I love lamp. I love lamp. I'm sorry, but it had to be done. Also, I am not sorry. Using the same rationalization, we can deduct that a creature with all this functional complexity, the human being, must have had an originator. Nope, because we know how human beings formed over time, much like the rest of everything. I mean, it's one thing to make the bold statement at the start of your video that atheism is over. But seriously, you thought this mess, this anti-science mumbo jumbo, would be anything other than proof positive that you have no idea how to convince anyone of anything. The lamp is made up of four components, whereas the human being is made up of three billion components in each and every one of his cells. Nope, I'm definitely done. You have just shown what an absolute scientific illiterate you are, and that comes from me, an oft maligned sexy moron. You want to say that human beings have billions of whatever, because cells are made up of however many stuffs, even though you are super goddamn vague about exactly what you mean, but the lamp has only four. You know that the components of a light bulb or whatever are also made of billions of atoms, right? And it all has this similar meaningless complexity. But that's just what it is, without meaning, much like this video. It is created from many parts, but as a whole, it's just a constant fart noise. 
Except not really, because at least a fart was created with a purpose that it actually meets. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoonstar Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-